that you have come. This is the fourth one that I am attending. You know, this morning there was an international one, then there was another one, third one. So goes on. Uh, this is this is a very very important uh, subject that we are going to discuss today because uh, uh, that this is not just a subject that we we treat like any other subject, you know, um, because this is a subject related to our life, chemistry, etc. Okay, you can learn and forget, right? And mathematics, you can learn and forget. Uh, simple calculations will be good, but nonviolence and peace. This is something that you need every day. Without peace, how can you live? Without nonviolence, how can you survive? So this is not just a discussion on a subject so that you listen and then forget. This is something in the absence of which it is like oxygen. Now you see how many people are dying without oxygen. Similarly, people are dying because of violence. People are dying because there is no there is no peace in the world. You see in the TV, what is happening in Palestine? So many people are doing because of war. So in many parts of the world, you see in the absence of peace, uh, many people are suffering, many people are dying. So don't treat this as one more subject about which we are discussing. This is a very life-related subject like oxygen. So let us, let us see, let us walk with it. Let us walk with this subject and slowly try to take it to your heart. You know, I'm not rushing you, but try to see how this can impact your life. Uh, so the importance of peace need to be understood by everyone because around you, you see how much conflicts are there, you know, conflicts because of election, conflicts because of caste, conflicts because, because of uh, language, conflict because of um, religion, conflicts because of states. You live in conflict from morning to evening. You may notice, you may not notice, but you are in conflict and you need to get out of it because if you want to have a conflict-free, peaceful, happy life, we need to work towards it. And we will work towards it only we understand why conflict and how they, that can be uh, resolved. So I am going to mainly speak about nonviolence and peace, the importance of nonviolence and why we need to walk this path of nonviolence to create peace. You know, peace is the byproduct. Even if there is nonviolence in the society, it will be a peaceful society. If there is violence in the society, this will be a disturbed society. So how do you create nonviolence? A nonviolent society is, is very, very important. So when I say nonviolence, right, I am speaking about direct violence and indirect violence. You know, in the society in which we live, we have two types of violence. All violence is not the same. We have direct violence, where you can see it. You can see somebody shooting the other, a war in Palestine. You can see uh, the violence happening. But there are other forms of violence which you can't see. And that is what young people need to understand. Around you, there is exploitation, there is oppression, there is poverty, there is injustice, there is marginalization, there is discrimination, right? These are all words that you know. See, there is discrimination, there is marginalization. Some people are out, some people are in, some people have, some people don't have. And some people are oppressed and some people have to pay money, corruption. So, so huge violence. For a poor person, if you ask him to pay 100 rupees, it's, it's a huge violence on him because he doesn't have the money. After COVID, COVID, you saw millions of people walking back to their villages. There is no train, there is no bus. And suddenly we said, lockdown, go. Where are they supposed to go? How are they going to go? And without food, people are marching, walking for days and days. So, you know, we have a lot of violence around you. So, Understand there is direct violence, a violence that you can see. There is also a violence that you can't see. But you can feel that this is happening all around you every day. So be aware of 
direct violence and non-direct, indirect violence. But I'm also speaking about uh, violence on nature. See, this is very important to understand that we think we can treat the nature the way we want. They also have life. River has life, tree has life, everything has life. So we have really used violence against our own, our own nature. It is like all the discussions today in the world is about climate crisis. What is climate crisis? We have polluted all the rivers. We have polluted the air. We have polluted the soil. We have polluted our own food. We have polluted the milk. We have polluted all the food. So it is basically, we have done violence to mother earth. The very earth that is giving us food. We have put full of fertilizer chemicals. The very river that is giving us water. We have put all the chemicals into the water. So we are cutting the branch on which you sit. You know this story, no? like it will be only idiots can do that you sit on a branch and you cut it. So you will fall, you will die. So what we are doing is we are committing violence on the planet and the planet is going to die. And people say 10 years to go. Within 10 years, if we don't correct this violence, then we are all going to finish. Right. So 10 years to go is the biggest, biggest agitation now, biggest slogan now. And a very young girl, Greta, is leading that. In Europe, what do they say? Friday for future. If we don't come out from the classroom and stand on the road and ask the leaders to change the policies, policies that will not pollute the world, there is no future. So Friday for future. Four days we will learn in the school. But one day is for our future. So Friday for Future is a huge movement led by Greta. And this is all about violence on nature. So if you understand, look, we have direct violence where you see violence happening. Uh, you have indirect violence. You don't see it every day, but it's happening around you. And you also, we also commit violence on nature. So all these forms of violence need to come to an end if we want a better world. Uh, and because this, what we are discussing is how do you create a better world? You know, how do you, how do you live in a world with peace? This is what everybody is asking. You make money, you make everything in order to have peace. And if peace is missing, what is the use of having money and bungalow and car and everything? Peace is missing. So everyone should try to build peace. And that is what we are discussing today. And when we say non-violence, it is also manasa vacha karmana. So non-violence is not only for policemen or to say that you should be non-violent. Uh, it is not for army to say you should be non-violent. This is for every one of us. We hurt, we, we, cre we develop a lot of ill feeling, bad feeling for others. We always think bad about others. We have competition about others. Uh, we want to see others suffering. These are all in the heart, manasa. That is what it's called. In our heart, in our mind, we sometimes see, hap find happiness in thinking bad about us. But sometimes we are also speak bad about us. But that is called vacha, uh, vachan. You know, the way you speak, karmana. Karmana means in action. So when we speak about non-violence, this is for us, for you, that am I non-violent in my thinking? I can be very violent in my thinking. Morning to evening thinking only violent things about everybody, uh, right? So can I be peaceful and non-violent in my mind? Can I speak non-violently so that I will not hurt others? You see, how many fights in the world are because the way we speak, we said something and the other guy will say, look, he, he abused me, so I want to take revenge. He used this dirty word against me. I want to take revenge. So people are basically fighting back because they heard some word that they didn't like. And this is so common in our mouth nowadays that we can use any dirty words about anybody. So our vachan, the way we speak, 
is very violent and much of the problem is uh, because of that. Now look, American president said, Putin is a killer. Putin is the, the, the president of Russia. So in one of his speech, he said, Putin is a killer. Now, the Russians are very angry. They didn't fight. They only said a word that they didn't like. So you can, in history, you will read that how many war, how many, how many fights are because of the kind of word that we use. And that is why in many universities, we have um, nonviolent communication as a subject. How do you communicate nonviolently? I'm stressing on it because many of you who are listening to me will be students. In your classroom, if you see, what is a fight? It's all about words that you have used. In your family, what is a fight? It's all words that you have used. And somebody didn't like it. Uh, why did you call me idiot? Eh? Why did you say, tell me this and that? So vacha is very important. So thinking need to be nonviolent. The way we speak need to be nonviolent. And our action need to be nonviolent. You know, we can also be very violent. When you go to the shop, you see how people buy. In a very violent way. I need everything. I need everything. And you don't even see which product is nonviolent. You know, buy a lot of things. Coca-Cola, for example. When we drink Coca-Cola, do we think who is producing Coca-Cola? How is it being produced? Where is the water coming from? How many people are displaced? We don't think. Uh, when we use electricity, misuse electricity, do we think how many dams are built? How many Adivasis are displaced? How much electricity am I consuming? Am I doing it correctly, etc.? So there is a behavioral pattern that can be nonviolent. So when I speak about, when we speak about nonviolence, it is basically a, an idea of manasa vaja karmana. So we need to, uh, we need to always think our behavior can create violence. So we don't have to look for violence in Palestinian and Afghanistan and in uh, uh, other countries. You can look violence in you. You can find violence in you that how is my thinking, my speaking, my behavior creating violence around me. Sometimes some people may not react, but they feel very uncomfortable that we behave in a way that they don't like. So please be careful and when we speak about nonviolence, understand that this is a much, much deeper subject than just speaking about nonviolence as something that is in that is somewhere very far. And in nonviolence and violence, you know what is the difference? In in violence, it's again a Sanskrit Sanskrit word. In violence, it goes ugra, ugratar, ugratam. What does it mean? Aggressive more aggressive, most aggressive. Uh, violence will go that way. It will be aggressive. Then if that doesn't work, they will go more aggressive. That doesn't work, they will go most aggressive. Recently, you saw that between Israel and Palestine, that they used small uh, food soldiers. Then they started rockets. Then they started very heavy machines and destroyed the whole town. So violence works that way. Violence is always more aggressive and most aggressive. It goes that way. That is the, the philosophy. But nonviolence moves in the other direction. It calls namra, namratar, namratam, humble, more humble, most humble. When I, when I see my, my style is not working, uh, then I will not go aggressive. Then I will say, okay, maybe I need to improve my style further to, to tackle this situation. Maybe I need to be much better if my mother need to understand me, my sister need to understand me because they are not understanding me now. So I need to, to be much more uh, uh, adjusting and caring, etc. These are two directions, friends. When people use violence and when they don't succeed, they don't change their way. They go higher in that, in that direction. Similarly, People who use non-violence should go only their path. They should not divert from their path. I'm humble and you didn't uh, behave with me correctly. Then I will become aggressive. No, that is not the way. That's not the way. You, then you are changing your course, right? 
So what I am trying to say, you need to muster the direction that you are taking. They, the people who believe in violence are mastering the art of violence. So if you are taking the line of non-violence, like Buddha did, like Gandhi did, then you need to master this art of art of non-violence. And, uh, and we need to, to make our path stronger. And that is what is the problem now. Uh, we don't have many, after Gandhi or Vinoba, we don't have many people who, who are trying to master this art of non-violence. Everybody is saying, okay, you take gun, you fight, you finish that guy off, you take revenge, you challenge him. So everybody is speaking the same language that violence need to be met with violence. So that is not going to work. That is what we need to understand. Uh, There's an interesting story by, by Buddha, uh, about Buddha. What is the story? Buddha, as usual, went out of his place because, you know, in Buddhism, you take, um, you go to every house and uh, ask for food and people give you food and you eat. I mean, if people don't give you, you don't eat, you, you fast. So Buddha took his um, ball and um, went to a rich man's house one day. And uh, he stood in front of the gate asking for food. But this is speaking about Buddha. Bhagavan Buddha, Lord Buddha. He was not Lord at that point of time, but he stood. And the, the rich man didn't like it. Rich man said, this is not good. In the morning when I get up, I don't want to see the face of a beggar. So he got very, very angry. And he said, look, you are a stupid man. You are, you are well built. Go and work and don't, uh, don't beg for your food. Uh, Buddha stood there smiling um, and uh, the rich man got violent. See, because, because I'm, I'm scolding you and you, you, are, you are smiling. What is the stupid thing happening? Then the old man said, are you dumb? You can't hear what I'm trying to say. You are a stupid and you, you, you people like you are destroying the world. So the, the more aggressive uh, the rich man became, the more smiling Buddha became, right? And it was not believable for the rich man that I will, I will use all abusive words. And still this, this Buddha, this monk will keep smiling. Then he realized that probably this man is uh, different. You know, this is, he's not an ordinary person in, in front of my gate. So he opened the gate, fell on the feet of Buddha and said, uh, I'm very sorry. Uh, I behaved with you in a very nasty way. Please forgive me, etc., etc. That was okay. Buddha smiled. Buddha said, no problem. This is fine. And uh, then he asked, this rich man asked, how did you manage? I'm scolding you and then you, you are smiling. How can you do this? This is impossible that you should get ag angry and aggressive. Then Buddha asked him a question. Buddha said, look, if you give me a cow and I don't accept the cow, the cow should belong to whom? Then the rich man said, oh, if you, as long as you don't accept the cow, the cow will belong to me because you are not accepting the cow. Then the cow is my cow. Uh, what, what else? Then Buddha said exactly the same way. You give me all the bad words and I don't accept it. Then it should belong to whom? <laughs> then the rich man said, oh, all that belong to me. <laughs> right? So it's almost like that. You know, it's like how, how Buddha was mastering the art of non-violence. And uh, how did he become Bhagavan Buddha, the, the Lord Buddha, is because he was mastering this art of non-violence. And finally, he said, non-violence is the way uh, for everything, hmm? uh, ahimsa. So Gandhi did the same. If you remember Gandhi, British people used all kinds of aggressive method against Gandhi. And Gandhi said, you may use maximum violence. All the violence you can use. But I will train my people to use non-violence. We will, we will spin charkha. We will go to prison. We will sit on satyagraha. We will not use violence against violence. This is a very, very important thing. The world can become a better place only when we shun violence. 
violence is not the answer to violence. And that is why Gandhi said, an eye for an eye will only make the world blind. I will, I will take your eyes and you take my eye and finally there is no eye. Everybody is blind. So violence is not the answer to violence. And that is why I generally tell people, I want to repeat that with you, that fire is not the answer for fire. If there is fire on a house, you don't put more fire. What you do, you bring water. So you know that fire is not for fire, water is for fire. Similarly, violence is not for violence, water is for violence. So when people use violence, people use abusive words, people misbehave, how do I bring water? How do I bring this component of non-violence so that so that uh, people, uh, the, the fire can be put down. Uh, putting down fire is your business, not increasing the fire by putting more fire into it. And this is what we should learn from history. See what happened in Iraq. There was some violence in Iraq and America said, we will bring more violence and put down Saddam Hussein. What happened? It is still violent. Every day some bomb goes off and so many people die. There is no peace. It is, it's years and years of violence. There is no end. You see Afghanistan? America said we will come and put down this violence of uh, uh, Taliban's. But uh, what happened? Now never ending violence, chain of violence. So violence is not the answer to violence. Whereas Yogesh was telling you initially in the Chambal region, we said all the decades will put their down, put down their arms. So there is violence. Everybody put down their arms. Everybody went to prison. They became farmers. So they took a different path that was putting water on fire. So as students, uh, this is your responsibility. Wherever you see fire, smoke, uh, two people are fighting. That's a smoke. It can become bigger. Uh, two communities are fighting. It's a smoke. It can become bigger. Two political parties are fighting. Two religions are fighting. So you will see a lot of smoke in your society, in your school, in your family. Then you should play the role of someone who can bring water and put it down. So that is the reason why people like Yogesh are organizing this workshop one after the other to help people to understand how do we master the art of non-violence? So that we, one, we believe in non-violence, non-violent behavior, and we also gain skills and capacities so that we can put down fire when we see fire somewhere else. If in the society you don't have enough people to put down fire, uh, how can the society be a peaceful society, right? Uh, but what is interesting, a lot of young people like you are now inventing methods. This is a very good news. No? In uh, many places, uh, people have seen a lot of violence. So people are learning, okay, violence cannot be fought with violence. So we need to learn non-violence and art of non-violence. So in many places, if you, if you are carefully watching, you will see in Hong Kong, when China is trying to put down the young people, what are they doing? They are inventing new methods of non-violence to fight. Uh, they are not succeeding in a big way, but still you can see, if you see the photographs in, uh, if you see the news, read the newspaper properly, they are trying to see how non-violent they can be so that they can counter this violence of China or the state. You, you will see the same thing happening in Taiwan. You will see that happening now in Myanmar, you know, Myanmar, Burma, uh, where the, the, the military has taken over and the elected government leaders are put into prison. There, the young people are every day inventing new methods, new methods. And Yogesh Bhai told you about Armenia, where I am working, Armenia, Georgia, where it was a very big violence and people learn to use non-violence and non-violent methods, etc., etc. So, what is our need? Our need is a lot of people, a lot of young people who believe in non-violence, 
and master the art of non-violence so that we are all there in the society. Every time when we see a violence, we can put it down. But what should you understand? We are not uh, in a playground where everybody is safe. Those who are selling violence are much, much stronger than you and me. We can, of course, sell some non-violence and promote some non-violence, etc. But people who are selling violence are very, very strong. And they are the producers of arms. You know, say they produce a lot of arms, small gun, big gun, a lot of new, new instruments. And what do they do? If they don't sell it, why should they make it? They are making arms, destructive arms, <coughs> because they want to sell it. And they are looking for market. And uh, they, they invest in that. They, make, they put money into it. They do a lot of research work into it. And finally, the research and the invention, innovation, all that put together, they make new weapons. Now, you see that. Bef some years back, people used to carry a big gun. It's heavy. Then they said, okay, let us make small gun, more powerful. So then they found out revolver. <coughs> now they're making small weapons like in your ring. On your ring, you can have a weapon. <coughs> On your wristwatch, you can have a weapon. So the industry of arms, the people who are making arms, are going very, very fast in terms of innovation and production of new, new weapons. And if they want to sell it in the market, what is important? You should believe, all of you should believe in violence. If you don't believe violent, in violence, why do you wait? So they also invest in educating young people to believe in violence, right? So if you believe in violence, when you become the, the leader of the country, you will say, okay, let us buy more weapons. Let us build our army. Let us have more policemen. You will not speak the language of peace because you, you are already taught that when you become somebody, you invest in building your army, building your police, building your weaponry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that is what is happening now. Almost everybody is speaking the same language that we should have a strong military, we should have a big army, and we should fight everybody. No, this is the language that we speak nowadays. So they produce arms because they want to sell it. And uh, they also brainwash all of us. They come to our classroom, you don't even realize. They introduce all, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, things in the classrooms. Uh, people say that drug addicts are increasing in the society. What is drug? It is, it's, it's one way to, to win you over, right? Drugs are introduced in classrooms and many young people are using drugs. And uh, teachers are very concerned about it. When I went to many states, people told me, look, drugs are becoming so common, it is reaching every classroom. So one way is to get you into violence through drugs and make you addict to drugs. The second way is to tell you, look, while non-violence will not work. But the Mahatma Gandhi and Bhagavan Buddha, these are all outdated. Forget about it. What did they achieve? They're all bad people. What did they do for the world? You take gun and change everything. Everything will be changed if you use gun and violence. So slowly, young people get excited. Like they get excited by Coca-Cola. They get excited by the ganja or drugs. They also get excited by this idea of gun and power. You know, it means if you have gun, you are a very powerful guy. Isn't it? Look at the small policeman. When he has a gun, he behaves as if he's somebody big. So they get this notion that we are big because we have power, we have gun. You know what is happening in America? Young people are bringing gun into classrooms. And whenever they have a difference with the teacher, they shoot teacher. Whenever they have differences with their fellow students, they teach, they shoot fellow students. You are reading it in the newspaper that in so many classrooms, so many kids are killed because there is freedom to carry small weapons. And if I have a gun at, in my house, my child will take it and go to the classroom and shoot whenever he wants to shoot. And when Obama became the president of America, he said, 
I will bring, I will introduce a small arms act, as a, a prevention of small arms. You know, that's, he said, look, uh, if we allow small arms, children will use it and we will lose a lot of kids. This is very bad. So he said, let us prevent. But he couldn't bring that act because the people who are making arms are more powerful. The richest people in the world are 17 families making, producing and selling arms. And they can be in Sweden, they can be in uh, France, they can be in America, but the 17 families, they control the economy of the world because they are the biggest producers and sellers of uh, uh, arms. And they also, this group also, not only, not only come to your classroom and change your language, they will always tell you, look, I mean, all this non-violence, etc. Forget about these guys like Raju Gopal. What is this non-violence? There is no meaning. So slowly you will, you will fully believe that, look, violence is the right thing to do. And then they will also introduce toys in the market. What are the toys? Gun and all these kinds of toys because most of the toys available in the market are all violent toys. Why are they selling violent toys? Because then you get attracted. You buy a gun. Then you pretend you are shooting your father. Your father will uh, go down on the bed and say, oh, I am dead because you shot me. You see this happening in every house. Parents acting as if they are killed because the child has shot them. This is the way the boy then laughs. Boy is not unhappy that I shot my father. He's killed. But he will laugh saying that, oh, look, I'm, I'm, I have succeeded. I have shot. I have killed. So slowly, they create this mindset that you enjoy using weapon toys. Also, social media is full of violence. You see this, the kind of language, the kind of kind of cartoons, it's full of, uh, full of violence. So language is changing, toys are changing. Hmm? So what is that? So this big business will destroy the world because it is all to make money. So in order to make money, they have to make the world a very violent place. Like the industries need to pollute this world to make money. Uh, arms traders need to kill people in order to make money. Uh, big companies need to make you eat dirty things in order to make money. Uh, so everybody is into making money. Nobody is really interested in a peaceful world, creating a peaceful world. I will tell you, you are, you are students and it is, it is sometimes difficult for you to understand. But then imagine in every country, how many Destructive weapons are there. One atom bomb is enough to destroy the world. You don't need so many. But in spite of that, every country has accumulated large number of uh, warheads. That's what it's called, warheads and arsenals. Warheads and arsenals, so many. For what? Not to fight poverty, not to provide education not provide nutrition to African boys and girls, all to destroy the world. And you know, the list of list, I will read it just for your, uh, just for the fun of it. Russia has 6,500 of them. This arsenals and war, warheads. Huh? And uh, you imagine how much space it need to keep. And it's a very dangerous thing. So you need to keep it so safe, not to get into the hands of wrong people. How much money will it cost? America has 6,155 of them. France has 300. China has 290. UK has 215. Israel has 80. Pakistan has 130. India also has 130 to 140. North Korea has 30. So I can give you a long list of countries which have warheads and arsenals in their stock pile, right, which can be used anytime to destroy the world. And this report came to us from where? The report of Federation of American Scientists on stockpile of warheads and arsenals. So look at the amount of money wasted. You see how many people are poor. You, you are traveling every day. You see so many people selling vegetables, making a living uh, on the roadside. Uh, people are suffering. After COVID, you know, you saw 
thousands of millions of people walking back they have no house to go so many people are so poor adivasis are so poor people are poor there is so much poverty on the land but the government is spending in arsenals and warheads because that is where the power is that i am a very powerful country powerful man if i have a gun etc etc so the notion of power gandhi was trying to tell us non violence is much more powerful than violence and you should believe in that you know non violence is much more powerful it is not only that gandhi said he showed it india became free through his method and after india became free through non violence many other countries also became uh, free uh, through through non violent methods right so that is one area i wanted to draw your your attention and a non violent mind is a, is a kind mind you know a kind kindness is very important in the world what is missing now compassion kindness etc so a mind of a mother that is what it is called you know kind when my children suffer uh, mother doesn't like it children have no food mother doesn't like it she will not eat but then she will feed the child a kind heart is uh, what is important that is why gandhi said think of the poorest and weakest he told the prime minister of india for all the planners and thinkers look everything else can come later don't worry when you think about the country don't think about army don't think about rich people think about the poorest and weakest person in the society the last person in the society how how can you help them is most important and then vivekananda said better than what gandhi said he said look as long as even a dog is hungry my spirituality is to find food for that dog well, that is more interesting isn't it i mean like a live alone human being but also a dog if that is hungry my spirituality is not go to tumble and ring the bell my spirituality is to find food for the dog so how do we make a society a kind society and a kind society will be a non violent society you will not want to hurt anybody so how do you create kindness in the classroom how do you create kindness in the village in the family so that we make a a non violent society now the last part i want to say is that i think uh, uh, yogesh told me that i can go up to to 6 and then there will be discussion so last part i want to say is to do that education should change because i am told most of you listening today are uh, students education should become non violent today's education is very very violent right because uh, it's very competitive is in nature you know everybody want to be first and in order to become first you need to have others going to second you know so you want to push people backwards so that you can go forward uh, so that is um, one one problem of uh, the educational system and it is all built on dream that when you are educated you will get a job you will get big uh, salary then you can buy car then you can build a house of your own and you are not told how education can be used for the poor people in the village how you can go and stay in a village how you can serve the people how you can be kind to everybody else how you can be kind to mother earth this is not what is being taught what is being taught is that how you can succeed how you can make money how you can join the best company the polluting companies and uh, make money and then build your house and buy a car and so this is not purposely done but the entire educational system is built like that and we are all part of it i came through that you are coming through that so we need to be very careful that how do we change this uh, uh and uh, making money making power is not important making a good society is important of course power and money are all you know i mean you need some power some money etc but then what what do you do with all this power and money if the society is restless and there is so much of violence what do you do with all this you know covid has come you have a lot of money what do you do with it it is locked down you can't go anywhere so the money is not the only criteria in life uh, we need a peaceful life even if less money but living in peace is more important so when you become a teacher when you grow up 
uh, I'm sure some teachers are also listening. We need to see why all the subjects cannot be uh, attached to non-violence. This is what I do in the schools and colleges. See, development. Why can't there be a non-violent developmental studies? Developmental studies is a subject, but then why can't it be non-violent developmental studies? Because the way development is run today is very violent. You take all the land and the farmers lose their land. They commit suicide. You make big roads, big airport, everything, but then poor people don't get anything out of it. You take all the land of the Adivasis for national park, wildlife sanctuaries, tiger reserves, and all of them are pushed out. You make big dams to produce a lot of electricity, but the people who are displaced don't even get a house. So the development is very, very violent. So that is why so many people feel uh, unhappy about this development model. So we need to see how developmental studies can be a non-violent developmental study so that we day one, we say, look, development should deliver justice to everybody, not to some people who have a car, who have a helicopter, et cetera. Similarly, how do we make a non-violent economy? Today's economy is top down. Some people have become rich and rich and rich. Bill Gates and uh, Tata, Birla, Jindal, Indal, Mittal, et cetera. You can count them on, on your finger. But millions of people without anything, no land, no house, nothing. They don't know where to go. They're all in the slums and in the cities or in the villages without food and water. So why is an economy like that? In spite of all the education of so many years, we are going to celebrate 75 years of India's freedom. What is that freedom where some people make a lot of wealth and others are uh, in the Jukji Jopadis in the, in, the, in the slums? So economy need to be non-violent and non-violent economic study is very important. Governance need to be non-violent. You become a collector, you become an SP, you become a Tazildar, you become BDO, you become Thanedar. What do you do? You try to extract money from everybody else. Uh, you become a lawyer, you want your people to pay you 100 rupees, you don't even know whether they have enough to eat or not. You become a police officer, you want money from the people. You become a collector, you have no time to meet anybody. You become a chief secretary, then nobody can see you. So you are educating people to govern by creating distance. You are not telling them, go to the village, sit there, listen to their problems, solve their problems. If you don't solve their problems, you don't get your salary. This is not what is said. This is said that you be comfortable. People will look care for themselves. And so this is the kind of, uh, kind of uh, governance system that we have brought up. So <clears throat> media, for example, social media, media, it's all very violent. Why can't there be a media that is spreading love and affection and, uh, and uh, communal harmony. So we have created system that is killing us now. So you need to recreate. And that is where some people have succeeded. Like in Norway, the government said newspaper should not report violence because they wanted to reduce violence in the society. They said all the prison should be, all the jail should be organized in a way that when people come out of the jail, they should become good citizens. So they are, they are training their jail staff to, to deal with the prisoners in a good manner so that when they come out of the jail, they know how to behave as a good citizen, etc. So there are methods, there are examples. Bhutan is a good example of happiness index. They said, no money. GDP is not our, our way. We want happiness. If all the citizens of my country are happy, then that is development. So there are examples. So what we should do is to keep our eyes open uh, and uh, very, very open mind to look around and learn. So let me conclude by saying so much violence is around. All direct violence, indirect violence, violence on uh, uh, earth, Mother Earth, uh, violence on uh, Kaveri, violence on Ganga, violence on uh, everything. And do you think army and police will uh, end this violence? Just because you make a big army, big police force, you think all this violence will be over? And this is not going to happen. 
police and army cannot be the solution for violence. Violence can end. A peaceful society will emerge only when we master the art of nonviolence. Each one of us learn about nonviolence, appreciate nonviolence, behave nonviolently, promote nonviolence around us, whether it's classroom or in the village or at home, and slowly create a nonviolent world order, right? Where justice will be available to everybody easily. If that is not done, everything will be just a show and we will continue to depend on force, the force of police, force of army to put down people when they speak, right? And that is happening in many parts of the world. So an enlightened world, a new world is not what we leave. You know? The leave, world we, we live is very limited. This is, this, is, uh, uh, or, this is a world of ordinary people. Uh, this is how ordinary people behave, greedy and wanting to accumulate, wanting to see others unhappy, wanting to have violence, etc. But your world, uh, I, am, I, may, I may not see that, but in your world, young people, your world should be very different. And you can create that world just by understanding the depth of nonviolence, how a nonviolent world order can be created. So that is my message today. And it is 6 1. So I am on time. So uh, Yogesh told me that now you are going to discuss among yourself. And finally, if there are some queries where I need to come in, I will come in. But please take your time and talk to each other and see whether this makes any sense. And I would encourage you to do that in Tamil. I can understand Tamil, no, no problem. I will make notes. So if you carry on a discussion on that, and if I see some questions that I need to answer at the end, I'll do so, gladly. Thank you very much, friends. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Rajaji. Thank you. Thank you. So, one of the most important one, one of the most Rajaji, one of the most important one. I am 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 one of the most important one. கேள்விகளுக்கு <laughs> because of the language. Oh, right? sure, yeah. sure. Do, oh, do that. I if take you have, a few minutes. If, uh, take yeah, 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 yeah. Take <laughs> some time and then so that they, okay. they flow with us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Raja Ji, you are a lot of work. I am a lot of work. So, we will see you in the next few years. We will see you in the next few years. We will see you in the next few years. We will see you in the next few years. We will see you in the next few years. We will see you in the next few years. ஸோ இந்த பீஸ் அண்ட் நான் வயலன்ஸும் கிட்டத்தட்ட இந்த உயிர் வாயு மாதிரி ஆக்சிஜன் மாதிரியான ஒரு முக்கியமான ஒரு விஷயமா தான் நம்ம வந்து பீஸ் அண்ட் நான் வயலன்ஸ் நம்மளால பார்க்க முடியும் இன்னைக்கு வந்து நம்மளை சுத்தி வந்து நிறைய கான்ஃபிளிக்ட் இருக்கு நிறைய வன்முறை இருக்கு ஸோ இந்த வன்முறை வந்து ஆஹ் மேபி பொலிட்டிக்ஸ் பாலிடிக்ஸ்னால அதாவது அரசியல்னால இது பண்றதுக்கெல்லாம் அல்லது கேஸ்ட் ஜாதி மதம் அல்லது வந்து மாநிலங்களுக்கு இடையே உள்ள வன்முறையா இருக்கலாம் இந்த மாதிரி நம்மளை சுத்தி ஒரு வன்முறையான ஒரு சூழல்ல வந்து நம்ம தொடர்ந்து வாழ்ந்துட்டு வர்றதை நம்ம பாக்குறோம் சோ அப்ப இந்த ஒரு ஒரு அமைதியான வாழ்க்கையை நம்ம வாழணும் அப்படின்னு நினைச்சோம்னா இந்த வன்முறையை விட்டு நம்மளால நம்மளால எப்ப வெளியே வர முடியுது அப்பதான் நம்மளால ஒரு அமைதியான ஒரு சூழலை உருவாக்க முடியும் ஒரு அமைதியான வாழ்க்கையை நம்மளால ஒரு உருவாக்க முடியும் ஸோ அதனால ஆஹ் நான் வயலன்ஸ் அதாவது அஹிம்சையும் அமைதியும் முக்கியமான ஒரு பங்கு பெறுது அதுல வந்து ஆஹ் இந்த வயலன்ஸ் இந்த வன்முறைன்றது வந்து நேரடி வன்முறை மட்டும் கிடையாது நம்ம யதார்த்தமா பாக்குற மாதிரி ஒரு கத்தி எடுத்து குத்துறதோ ஒருத்தர நேரடியா தாக்குறதோ மட்டும் வன்முறை கிடையாது இப்ப இன்டைரக்ட் வயலன்ஸ் அப்படின்றத ராஜாஜி வந்து சுத்தி தர்றாரு இன்டைரக்ட் வயலன்ஸ்ல அப்ப நிறைய விஷயங்கள் வந்து இந்த இன்டைரக்ட் வயலன்ஸ்ல கொ
இந்த இயற்கையை அழைக்கிறது இயற்கையை சுரண்டது பாவர்டி அது அநீதி ஒரு மக்களுக்கு அநீதி டிஸ்கிரிமினேஷன் சொல்லக்கூடிய அதாவது ஒரு பாகுபாடு மக்களுக்கு மத்தியில பார்க்கக்கூடிய பாகுபாடு கூட ஒரு வன்முறை தான் அதே மாதிரி லஞ்சம் வாங்குறது வரதட்சணை வாங்குறது இந்த மாதிரி நிகழ் காலத்துல தனி மனிதன் வேற ஒரு அடுத்த மனிதனை பிரச்சனைக்குள்ளாக்கக்கூடிய பாதிக்கக்கூடிய எந்த ஒரு விஷயமுமே அது ஒரு வன்முறை தான் பார்க்கும் இதை வந்து ஒரு இன்டைரக்ட் வயலன்ஸா நம்ம பார்க்கணும் அப்ப வந்து ஒரு நம்மளால பார்க்க முடியுது ஒரு ஒரு சாதாரண ஒரு மனிதனால ஒரு ஒரு அரசு நிறுவனத்திலயோ ஒரு இதுலயோ போய் லஞ்சம் கொடுத்து ஒரு வேலை செய்ய முடியாது அப்ப அது அது ஒரு வன்முறை சோ அவனுக்கு கிடைக்க வேண்டிய உரிமைகளை வந்து மறுத்து லஞ்சத்துக்குள்ள கட்டாயப்படுத்துறது இது மாதிரியான விஷயங்கள் எல்லாமே வன்முறை கோவிட் நேரத்துல நம்ம பாக்குறோம் அப்ப ஒரு ஒரு சில நடவடிக்கைகள்னால இங்க இருக்கக்கூடிய சாதாரண மனிதர்கள் வந்து மைக்ரண்ட் லேபர்ஸ் அங்க இருந்து இடம் பெயரக்கூடிய சூழ்நிலை நம்ம பாக்குறோம் மைக்ரண்ட் லேபர்ஸ் அங்க இருந்து அவங்க இடம் பெயர்றாங்க அப்படின்னா ஆஹ் அவங்களுக்கு என்ன வாய்ப்புகள் நம்ம ஏற்படுத்தி கொடுத்துக்கிறோம் அந்த மக்கள் வந்து இங்க உழைக்கிறதுக்காக வந்த மக்கள் அப்ப அந்த மக்களை வந்து சுத்தமா வந்து நம்ம தொடச்சு விட்டுட்டோம் அவங்கள பத்தி நம்ம கவலை இல்லாம அவர்களை வந்து நம்ம தெருக்கள்ல வந்து அலைய விட்டுருக்கிறோம் பாதிப்புக்குள்ள ஆக்கியிருக்கிறோம் இப்ப இது எல்லாமே வன்முறை தான் அப்படின்றத ராஜாஜி சுற்றி பார்க்கிறாங்க அப்போ அதே மாதிரி இயற்கை மீதான வன்முறை இயற்கையில ஒவ்வொரு விஷயத்துக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு ஒரு ஆற்றுக்கும் உயிர் இருக்கு ஒரு மரத்துக்கு உயிர் இருக்கு ஒரு பணத்துக்கும் உயிர் இருக்கு அப்போ இயற்கையில ஒவ்வொரு விஷயத்துக்கும் ஒரு உயிர் இருக்கு ஒரு உன்னதமான ஒரு பொருள் இருக்கு அப்போ இத வன்முறைக்குள்ளாக்கி நாம வந்து காலநிலை மாற்றம் மாதிரியான பல விஷயங்களுக்கு வந்து நம்ம கொண்டு போறோம் அத வந்து கொண்டு போறோம் அதனால இன்னைக்கு நம்ம சுவாசிக்கிற காத்துல இருந்து சாப்பிடுற சாப்பாடுல இருந்து எல்லாமே வந்து ஒரு நச்சு பொருளா நம்ம மாத்தி வச்சிருக்கிறத பத்தி ராஜாஜி பேசுறாரு அதுக்கப்புறம் இது எப்படி நம்ம பாக்குறது அப்படின்னா ஒரு மனிதன் வந்து வன்முறைக்குள்ளாக்கப்பட்ட ஒரு சமுதாயம் வந்து ஒரு ஒரு கிளையில உட்காந்துக்கிட்டு அந்த கிளையை வெட்டுறதுக்கான அது எவ்வளவு பெரிய முட்டாள்தனமோ அந்த ஒரு முட்டாள்தனத்தை தான் நம்ம இன்னைக்கு தொடர்ந்து வந்து இங்க இந்த இந்த பூமியில நம்ம செஞ்சுக்கிட்டு இருக்கணும் அப்படின்றது வந்து சுட்டி இருக்காரு அப்போ ஆஹ் இது மாதிரியான சூழ்நிலைகள்ல இருந்து வெளியே வர்றதுக்கான வாய்ப்புகள் பார்க்கும்போது இன்னைக்கு இளைய தலைமுறைகள் தான் இன்னைக்கு ரொம்ப பிரகாசமா இருக்கு கிரேட்டா துன்பக் மாதிரியான ஆஹ் சுற்றுச்சூழல் போராளிகள் ஒரு இளம் வயது சுற்றுச்சூழல் போராளிகள் ஆஹ் ஃப்ரைடேஸ் ஃபார் ஃபியூச்சர் அப்படின்ற மாதிரியான முன்னெடுப்புகள் ஒவ்வொரு வாரமும் வெள்ளிக்கிழமையும் நான் சுற்றுச்சூழலுக்காக குரல் கொடுப்பேன் என்னுடைய வகுப்பறை விட்டு வெளியே வந்து நான் சுற்றுச்சூழலுக்காக என்னுடைய வருங்காலத்துக்காக நான் குரல் கொடுப்பேன் அப்படின்னு கிரேட்டா துன்பக் மாதிரியான இளம் ஆஹ் செயல்பாட்டாளர்கள் வெளியே வரதை பார்க்கணும் அப்போ இந்த சமுதாயத்துல அமைதி இல்லாம காசோ பணமோ இது ஒரு நிம்மதியான வாழ்க்கையை நமக்கு கொடுக்க போறாங்க அப்போ அதை பத்தி பேசும்போது நம்ம அந்த அமைதி அப்படின்றது வந்து சமுதாயத்தில் நீடிச்சு நிக்கணும்னா அவர் மூணு விஷயத்த சொல்றாரு மனசா வாட்சா கர்மா அதாவது மனதளவுல நான் எப்படி அதிக வன்முறையற்றவனா இருக்கணும் என்னுடைய பேச்சு வன்முறையற்ற பேச்ச வெளிப்படுத்தணும் என்னுடைய செயல்கள் வந்து வன்முறையற்ற செயல்களை வெளிப்படுத்தணும் அப்ப இன்னைக்கு நிறைய பிரச்சனைகள் வந்து உலகம் தோறும் நடக்கிறதுல வந்து நிறைய பிரச்சனைகள் வந்து நம்ம வீடுகள்ல எடுத்துக்கிட்டோம்னா நம்ம செய்ய சொல்லக்கூடிய சொல்லுல இருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு மன்மமான சொற்கள் தீய சொற்கள் கடுமையான சொற்கள் வந்து பிரச்சனைகள் உண்டாக்குது இது ஃபேமிலியில மட்டும் இல்லாம இது நாடுகள் வரைக்கும் போகுது அதுல வந்து அமெரிக்கன் பிரசிடென்ட் வந்து ஆஹ் புட்டின் வந்து ஒரு கொலைகாரன் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி ஒரு விஷயம் சொன்னதுனால எப்படி வந்து ரஷ்யா வந்து கோபம் முற்றுது இது இது மாதிரியான சம்பவங்கள் வந்து உலகம் முழுவதும் பெரிய போர்கள் வரையில கொண்டு போய் முடிக்கிறத வந்து ராஜாஜி சுட்டி காட்டுறாரு அப்போ நம்ம சொல்ல மனதளவுல நம்ம வந்து வன்முறை சொல்லா இருக்கணும் அதே மாதிரி நம்ம பேச்சு வந்து வன்முறை வெளிப்படுத்தாத பேச்சா இருக்கணும் அதே மாதிரி நம்ம செயல்பாடுகளும் வன்முறையை வெளிப்படுத்தாத செயல்பாடுகளா இருக்கணும் அதனால இன்றைக்கு சூழ்நிலையில வந்து நிறைய நாடுகள் வந்து நான் வயலன்ஸ வந்து ஒரு அஹ் கற்றுக் கொடுக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு பாடமா என்னை அறிவிக்கக்கூடிய சூழ்நிலையில பார்க்கணும் அப்ப வந்து ஆஹ் அதே மாதிரி செயல்பாடுகள் நினைக்கும் போது இன்டைரக்ட் வயலன்ஸ நம்ம சுற்றி பார்க்கணும் இப்போ கொக்கோ கோலா நம்ம சாப்பிட்றோம் அப்படின்னா அந்த கொக்கோ கோலா எங்க உற்பத்தி ஆகுது அதனால எத்தனை மக்கள் பாதிக்கப்பட்டிருக்கிறாங்க அந்த ஃபேக்டரினால எத்தனை மக்கள் இடம்பெயர்ந்தாங்க தேவையில்லாம பயன்படுத்தக்கூடிய மின்சாரம் உற்பத்தி பண்றதுக்கு எத்தனை டேம் கட்டப்பட்டிருக்கு அந்த டேம் கட்டப்பட்டதுனால எத்தனை ஆதிவாசிகள் இடம்பெயர்ந்திருக்காங்க எத்தனை எத்தனை பேர் கஷ்டப்பட்டு இந்த விஷயத்த நான் எடுத்திருக்காங்க இதுவும் ஒரு வயலன்ஸ் தான் அப்ப இதை இதெல்லாம் நம்மளுடைய பிஹேவியரல் பேட்டர்னா சொல்ல வரா அப்படின்ற
நான் வேலன்ஸ் உள்ள பேட்டர்ன் வந்து இன்னும் மென்மையாக அதை விட மென்மையாக போகக்கூடிய சூ சூழ்நிலை பார்க்கிறோம் அப்போ வந்து ஒரு மென்மையான ஒரு மனிதன் வந்து நான் வேலன்ஸ உள்வாங்கி கொண்ட ஒரு மனிதன் வந்து ஆஹ் ஒரு வன்முறையால பாதிக்கப்பட்டிருக்கும் பொழுது நான் வன்முறையை கையில் எடுக்கிறேன் அப்படின்றது ஒரு மிக தவறான செயல்பாடா இருக்கும் அவர் அது வந்து அவர் எடுத்துக்கொண்ட அந்த கொள்கைய அவர் நம்பல அப்படின்றத நம்ம வெளிப்படுத்துது அதுக்கு வந்து புத்தருனுடைய ஒரு மிக சிறந்த ஒரு ஒரு வாழ்வியல் அனுபவத்தை சொல்றாங்க அப்ப வந்து ஒரு புத்தர் வந்து ஒரு ஒரு பெரிய பணக்காரனுடைய வீட்டுல போய் ஆஹ் அவர்கிட்ட இரவலுக்கு நிக்கும் பொழுது அந்த பணக்காரர் வந்து ரொம்ப இது பண்ணு காலையிலேயே வந்து நீ என்ன எப்படி பண்ற நீ உழைக்கலையா அது இதுன்னு அவர வன்மத்தோட சண்டை போடும் பொழுது புத்தர் வந்து ரொம்ப மென்மையா சிரிச்சு அதை உள்வாங்கிக்கும் பொழுது அந்த வன்முறையை கையாண்ட அந்த பணக்கார மனிதர் வந்து திரும்ப வந்து என்ன சொல்றாரு நான் உன இவ்வளவு திட்டுறேன் நீ இவ்வளவு கோபமா நான் உன்னை வெளிப்படுத்துறேன் ஆனா நீ எப்படி நீ வந்து சிரிச்சுக்கிட்டே நீ வந்து இருக்கிற உன்னால எப்படி இது புரியுது நீ ஏன் உன்னால நீ ஏன் கோபம் பட முடியல அப்படின்றப்போ அவ சொல்றாரு இப்போ உங்ககிட்ட ஒரு மாடு இருக்கு அதை நீங்க என்ன குடுக்குறீங்க அப்படின்னு முன் வந்தீங்க அப்ப அந்த மாடை நான் ஏத்துக்கல அப்படின்னா அந்த மாடு யாருக்கு சொந்தமாகும் அப்படின்னு உடனே அந்த அந்த பணக்கார மனிதர் சொல்றாரு அது எனக்கு தான் சொந்தம் நீ ஏத்துக்கலன்னா அது எனக்கு தான் சொந்தம் அதே மாதிரிதான் நீங்க வெளிப்படுத்தின கோபத்தை நான் ஏத்துக்கல நீங்க வெளிப்படுத்தின அந்த கோபமான வார்த்தைகளை நான் ஏத்துக்கல அப்படின்னா அந்த வார்த்தைகள் திரும்ப உங்களுக்கு தான் சொந்தமாகுது அப்படின்றத அவர் சொல்றாரு அப்போ இது அந்த புத்தர் வந்து எவ்வளவு ஆழமாக தன்னுடைய ஆஹ் வன்முறையற்ற ஒரு வாழ்வியல கட்டமைச்சிருக்கிறார் அப்படின்னு நம்மளால பார்க்கணும் அதே மாதிரி ஆஹ் ஒரு வன்முறைக்கு இன்னொரு வன்முறை தீர்வாங்க நெருப்புக்கு நெருப்பு தீர்வாங்க ஒரு நெருப்பு எரியுதுன்னா அதை வந்து தண்ணீரால தான் அணைக்க முடியும் அப்படின்றத ராஜா சுட்டிக்காங்க அதே மாதிரி ஆஹ் இதுக்கு எதிர்க்கா எடுத்துக்காட்டா ஆப்கானிஸ்தான்ல நடந்த இது மாற்றம் ஆப்கானிஸ்தான்ல சதாம் ஹுசைன் வந்து வன்முறையை கையாள்றாரு ஒரு மிகப்பெரிய வன்முறையை நோக்கி அந்த தேசம் போகுது அப்ப அதை வந்து இன்னொரு வன்முறையால நான் அதை சரி பண்ணி அங்க அமைதியை கொண்டு வருவேன் அப்படின்னு அமெரிக்கா ஆஹ் துணிஞ்சு உள்ள இறங்கின இதுல இருந்து இன்றைக்கு வரைக்கும் அங்க வந்து அமைதியை அமெரிக்கானால உண்டாக்க முடியல அப்போ வன்முறையினால நிச்சயமாக வன்முறைய நம்ம தீர்வா கொடுக்கவே முடியாது அப்படின்றத ரொம்ப ஆணித்திரமான சொல்லி ஒரு அமைதியான ஒரு சமுதாயத்தை கட்டமைக்க வேண்டிய ஒரு மிக கட்டாய சூழ்நிலை நம்ம இப்போ சைனால நடக்கிற வன்முறைகள் மியான்மர்ல நடக்கிற வன்முறைகள் இது மாதிரியான வன்முறைகளை வந்து நம்ம பார்த்துக்கிட்டே இருக்கோம் அப்போ இன்னைக்கு இது எப்படி கட்டமைக்கப்படுது அப்படின்னு பார்த்தா உலகளாவிய ட்ரேடிங் வணிகம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு மிகப்பெரிய வன்முறை சார்ந்த வணிகமா இன்னைக்கு உலகத்துல இருக்கக்கூடிய மிகப்பெரிய பணக்கார ஆஹ் தொழிற்சாலைகள் வந்து ஆஹ் துப்பாக்கிகள் போக அணு ஆயுதங்கள் போன்ற ஒரு வெப்பன் தயாரிக்கக்கூடிய தொழிற்சாலைகளா இருக்கு அதை மார்க்கெட்ல கொண்டு வராங்க அப்ப அதை மார்க்கெட்ல கொண்டு வந்து அது விற்பனை ஆகணும்னா இங்க சண்டை நடக்கும் இங்க வந்து பிரச்சனைகள் நடக்கணும் அப்ப பிரச்சனைகளை ஊக்குவிக்கிற ஒரு ஒரு டெவலப்மெண்ட் மாடல் நம்பாங்க பிரச்சனைகள் ஊக்குவிக்கிற ஒரு மார்க்கெட் வந்து அதிகமா இருக்கு அப்போ மிகப்பெரிய போர் கருவிகள்ல இருந்து இன்னைக்கு வந்து கையடக்க கருவிகள் வந்துருச்சு துப்பாக்கி பெருசா இருந்ததுல இருந்து கையில நம்மளுடைய மோதத்துல வச்சிருக்கக்கூடிய ஆயுதங்களாகவும் நம்மளுடைய பாய்ச்சல கட்டி இருக்கக்கூடிய ஆயுதங்களாகவும் நம்ம அந்த அளவுக்கு டெக்னாலஜி அப்படின்ற பேர்ல இன்னைக்கு வந்து ஒரு அழிவுக்குள்ளான ஒரு அழிவுக்கான ஒரு வெப்பனை வந்து நம்ம கையடக்க கருவியா கொண்டு வந்துட்டோம் சோ இது வந்து இன்னும் இன்னும் நம்மளை வந்து வன்முறையை நோக்கி அந்த உலகத்தை வந்து அமைதி இல்லாத சூழ்நிலை உருவாக்க நோக்கி போய்கிட்டே இருக்கு அப்போ இத இந்த இவங்க தயாரிக்கக்கூடிய இந்த வன்முறைக்கான தொழில்நுட்பத்தை விற்கிறதுக்காக இவங்க வந்து தொடர்ந்து வன்முறையை வந்து ஊக்கப்படுத்துற வேலைகள்லயும் நம்ம ஈடுபட்டு இருக்கிறாங்க அதே மாதிரி இன்னைக்கு வந்து பரவலாக வகுப்பறைகள்ல போதைப் பொருட்களுடைய பழக்கம் அதிகமா இருக்கும் போதைப் பொருட்களுடைய பழக்கத்தை அதிகமா இருக்கும் இதனால வன்முறைகள் உண்டாகுது ஆஹ் அதை நம்மளால பார்க்க முடியுது ஆஹ் அமெரிக்கா மாதிரியான நாடுகள்ல நம்ம தினந்தோறும் செய்தித்தாள நம்ம அடிக்கடி நம்ம பார்க்கக்கூடிய விஷயமா இருக்கு ஒரு மாணவ பள்ளி மாணவன் வந்து தன்னுடைய தந்தையினுடைய துப்பாக்கி எடுத்துட்டு வந்துட்டு தனக்கு பிடிக்காத நண்பர் சகாக்கள் மாணவ பள்ளி மாணவர்களை ஆசிரியரை தன்னை திட்டின ஆசிரியரை கண்டிச்ச ஆசிரியரை கோபத்துல உடனடியா கொள்ளக்கூடிய சம்பவங்கள் நம்ம பார்க்கறோம் அப்ப இது சர்வசாதாரணம் நடக்கும் போது என்ன மாதிரியான ஒரு சூழ்நிலையை நம்ம கட்டமைச்சிருக்கோம் இந்த ஒரு வன்முறையான சூழலை ஒரு இளம் வயதுல ஒரு அடுத்த சந்ததியில நம்ம கட்டமைச்சிருக்கிறோம் அப்படின்றத நம்ம பார்க்க வேண்டியதா இருக்கு அப்போ ஒபாமாவினுடைய காலகட்டத்துல இதெல்லாம் கொஞ்சம் கட்டுப்படுத்துறதுக்கான 
சூழ்நிலையில் நம்மளால பார்க்க முடியுது அப்போ குறிப்பாக இந்த அணு ஆயுத இந்த வன்முறைக்கான ஆயுதங்களை தயாரிக்கக்கூடிய பதினேழு மிகப்பெரிய குடும்பங்கள் இருக்கிறாங்க இவங்க வந்து இந்த உலகத்தினுடைய ஒட்டுமொத்த பொருளாதாரத்தையும் தன்னுடைய கட்டுப்பாட்டுக்குள்ள வச்சிருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு மிக பவர்ஃபுல்லான ஆட்களாக அவங்க இருக்கிறாங்க இன்னைக்கு வந்து அதை ஊக்குவிப்பதற்காக நம்ம கிட்ட இருக்க டாய்ஸ் நம்ம சொல்லக்கூடிய விளையாட்டு பொருட்கள் ஆஹ் இதுல இருந்து எல்லாத்துலயுமே வன்முறை இருக்கிறாங்க நம்ம பார்க்கக்கூடிய சினிமா நம்ம பார்க்கக்கூடிய திரைப்படங்கள் நம்ம பார்க்கக்கூடிய எல்லா விஷயங்களும் வன்முறை தான் பெருசு வன்முறை தான் பவர்ஃபுல் அப்படின்றத காட்டக்கூடிய ஒரு மனநிலை உண்டாகக்கூடிய வழிமுறைகளை ஏற்படுத்தலாம் இதுல பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு சின்ன குழந்தை பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு சின்ன குழந்தை ஆஹ் ஒரு துப்பாக்கி எடுத்து ஒரு ஒரு விளையாட்டு துப்பாக்கி எடுத்து தன்னுடைய தந்தையை வந்து சுடுற மாதிரி ஆஹ் அது சுட்டு அது சந்தோஷப்படுது அந்த தந்தையும் கீழே விழுந்து சாகர மாதிரி நடிச்சு சந்தோஷப்படுறாரு இது ரொம்ப ஒரு குழந்தைத்தனமாக இருந்தாலும் அப்ப என்ன மாதிரியான கருத்து அந்த குழந்தைக்குள்ள விதிக்கணும் அந்த குழ குழந்தை வந்து தன்னுடைய தந்தைய சுடுறோம் அப்படின்ற எண்ணம் அந்த எண்ணம் இல்லாம அத வந்து விரும்பக்கூடிய மனநிலைய வன்முறைய எப்படி வந்து சைலண்டா ஒரு உட்புகுத்துறாங்க அப்படின்றத பத்தி நம்ம ராஜாஜி சொன்னாரு அதே மாதிரி சோசியல் மீடியால இருக்கக்கூடிய வன்மங்கள் தனக்கு ஒவ்வொரு கருத்துக்களை சொல்றவங்களுக்கு தனக்கு பிடித்தம் இல்லாத ஆட்களை வந்து கீழே ஆஹ் நம்ம நாள்தோறும் பாக்குறோம் எப்படி எல்லாம் இந்த சமுதாயம் வந்து கமெண்ட் பண்ணுது அவங்கள வந்து எப்படி வன்முறை வந்து பேச்சுகளால தன்னுடைய கருத்துக்களால வெளிப்படுது அப்படின்றத பாக்குறோம் அப்போ இது எல்லாமே அப்ப நம்ம பார்க்கக்கூடிய எல் இந்த இந்த சமுதாயத்தில் இருக்கக்கூடிய மிகப்பெரிய நிறுவனங்கள் வந்து இந்த மாதிரியான வன்முறைகள் மூலமாக காசு சம்பாதிக்கணும் பணம் சம்பாதிக்கணும் அப்படின்ற கட்டுப்பாட்டுல நிலைப்பாட்டுல இருக்கிறாங்க அப்போ ஆஹ் இந்த இந்த உலகத்துல இருக்கக்கூடிய மிக கொடிய அணு ஆயுதங்களை வைத்திருக்கக்கூடிய நாடுகளுடைய பட்டியல வந்து ராஜாஜி இப்ப ரஷ்யால வந்து ஆறாயிரத்தி ஐநூறு அணு ஆயுதங்கள் இருக்கு அமெரிக்கால ஆறாயிரத்தி நூற்றி ஐம்பது அணு ஆயுதங்கள் பிரான்ஸ்ல முன்னூறு சைனால இருநூத்தி தொண்ணூறு யூகேல இருநூத்தி பதினஞ்சு இஸ்ரேல்ல எண்பது பாகிஸ்தான்ல நூத்தி முப்பது இந்தியால நூத்தி முப்பதுல இருந்து நூத்தி நாற்பது நாட்டு கொரியால முப்பது இந்த அணு ஆயுதங்கள் எதுவும் விவசாயிகளுக்கு பயன்படுத்த பயன்படுறது மா மாணவர்களுக்கு பயன்பட போறது கிடையாது இது எல்லாமே வன்முறையதா இருக்கும் இப்ப இந்த இந்த எல்லா அணு ஆயுதங்களும் இந்த ஒரு ஒரு அணு ஆயுதம் போதும் ஒரு நாட்டை வந்து மொத்தமா ஒழிக்கிறது இப்ப இந்த எல்லா அணு அணு ஆயுதத்தையும் பாதுகாக்கிறதுக்கு நிறைய செலவிடணும் நிலைய நினைக்கிடணும் நிறைய போர்ஸ் வேணும் இது தவறானவங்க கைக்கு போயிருக்கூடாது இது எல்லாமே அமைதியை உண்டு உண்டு பண்றதுக்காக நாங்க இந்த அணு ஆயுதத்தை வச்சிருக்கோம் எல்லா நாடுகளும் ஆனாலும் ஒரு அணு ஆயுதத்தால வந்து எப்படி அமைதியை உண்டு பண்ணணும் அணு ஆயுதம் வந்து இன்னொரு நாடை வந்து நிச்சயமா வந்து அது பிரச்சனைக்குள்ளாதான் ஆக்கும் அது ஒரு பாதிக்கதான் செய்யும் அப்படின்ற எண்ணம் இல்லாம இப்ப இது மாதிரியான சிந்தனைகள்ல வந்து எல்லா நாடுகளும் அப்படின்றத நம்ம பார்க்கணும் அப்போ இந்தியா வந்து ஒரு மிகச்சிறந்த உதாரணமா இருக்கு இந்தியா வந்து தன்னுடைய சுதந்திரத்தை தன்னுடைய விடுதலைய அஹிம்சை வழியில அற வழியில காந்தியினுடைய தலைமையில பெற்றுக் கொண்டுச்சு அப்போ அஹிம்சைக்கான ஒரு மிகச்சிறந்த உதாரணமாக இந்தியா உருவாச்சு அதை அதை பின்தொடர்ந்து நிறைய நாடுகள் வந்து அஹிம்சைகள் மீது அஹ் நம்பிக்கை கொண்டு நிறைய நாடுகள் தன்னுடைய சுதந்திரத்தை வந்து அஹிம்சை மூலமா பெற்றாங்க இன்னைக்கும் நிறைய புரட்சிகள் நிறைய செயல்பாட்டாளர்கள் அஹிம்சை வழியை தன்னுடைய அரசாங்கத்துக்கு எதிரான ஆயுதமா இருக்கிறதா நம்ம பார்க்கணும் அப்ப வந்து காந்தியடிகள் சொல்லக்கூடிய ஒரு மிக முக்கியமான வார்த்தையை வந்து மேற்கொள்ளுகின்றார் நீ ஒரு முடிவு எடுக்கும் பொழுது இந்த நாட்டுல இருக்கக்கூடிய கடை கோடியில இருக்கக்கூடிய சாதாரண மனிதனை நினைச்சுதான் நீ முடிவு எடுக்கணும் இங்க இருக்கக்கூடிய பவர்ஃபுல் ஆளை நினைச்சு நீ எந்த ஒரு முடிவு எடுக்க கூடாது ஒரு சாதாரண மனிதனுக்கு அது அது என்ன மாதிரியான பாதிப்புகளை உண்டாக்கும் அது எப்படி வந்து அவனுக்கு பயன் தரும் அப்படின்றத நினைச்சுதான் இந்த ஒவ்வொரு முடிவுகளையும் நான் நம்ம எடுக்கணும் அப்படின்றத நினைச்சிருக்கா அப்போ இன்னைக்கு கல்வி வந்து ஒரு வன்முறை இல்லாத கல்வியா மாறும் இன்னைக்கு கல்வி வந்து காம்படிஷன் ஒரு போட்டி கல்வியா மாறும் ஒரு போட்டி கல்வியா மாறும் போது என்னை சுத்தி இருக்கிறவன் எனக்கு என்னுடைய நண்பன் வந்து எனக்கு அடுத்த நிலையை தான் பெறணும் நான் தான் முதல்ல இருக்கணும் அப்ப அடுத்தவனை தள்ளி விட்டு நான் வரக்கூடிய ஒரு போட்டி மனப்பான்மையை உருவாக்கக்கூடிய கல்வியா இருக்கு அது மட்டும் இல்லாம நம்ம முன்னாடி இருந்த வந்து நீ நம்ம படிச்சு நம்ம எப்படி கார் வாங்கலாம் நம்ம எப்படி வீடு கட்டலாம் நம்ம எப்படி நல்லா வாழலாம் இப்ப அப்படின்னு சொல்லித்தர அப்படின்ற அந்த நோக்கி தான் நம்ம கல்வி போகுதே தவிர இந்த கல்வி வந்து எப்படி வந்து ஏழைகளுக்கு உதவலாம் எப்படி இங்க இருக்கக்கூடிய பிரச்சனைகளை சரி பண்ணலாம் எப்படி இங்க இருக்கக்கூடிய விஷயங்களுக்கு தீர்வு கண்டுபிடிக்கலாம் அப்படின்றத சொல்லி கொடுக்கக்கூடிய கல்வியாக இல்ல அப்படி
இதன் மூலமா இயற்கை சுரண்டுறதுக்கு உண்டான அந்த கல்வி வந்து நம்ம கிட்ட ஆஹ் வழி நடத்தி செல்லுது அப்படின்றத நம்ம பாக்குறோம் அப்ப வந்து நிச்சயம் அந்த கல்வியில வந்து வன்முறையற்ற அஹிம்சை வழியிலான நான் வயலன்ஸ் ஸ்டடிஸ வந்து கொண்டு வர வேண்டியது ரொம்ப முக்கியமா இருக்கும் இந்த கல்வியின் மூலமா எப்படி வந்து விவசாயிகள் வந்து பாதுகாக்கலாம் இந்த கல்வி மூலமா எப்படி இயற்கையை பாதுகாக்கலாம் இந்த கல்வி மூலமா எப்படி அடித்தட்டு மக்களை பாதுகாக்கலாம் அப்படின்றத தான் பார்க்கணும் ஏன்னா இந்த கல்வி வளர்ந்து வர சூழல் பார்க்கும்போது தொடர்ந்து வந்து நம்ம இந்த கல்வி எவ்வளவு வளர்ச்சி அடைஞ்சாலும் தொடர்ந்து பணக்காரர்கள் வந்து மேலும் பணக்காரர்கள் ஆகிட்டே போறாங்க இன்னைக்கு பாத்தீங்கன்னா இந்தியானுடைய ஜிடிபினுடைய மொத்த இது பாத்தீங்கன்னா அதுல தொண்ணூறு சதவீத இந்தியனுடைய இந்தியாவுடைய மொத்த வளமுமே ஒரு பதினஞ்சு இருபது பெரும் பணக்காரர்கள்ட்ட இருக்கு மீதி பத்து சதவீதம் தான் பொதுமக்கள்ட்ட இருக்கு அப்போ ஒரு பக்கம் எப்படி வந்து ஒரு பவர்ஃபுல் செக்டார் நம்ம உருவாக்கிக்கிட்டு இருக்கோம் அப்படின்ற கேள்வி நம்ம கிட்ட இருக்கு அதே மாதிரி அதுக்கு கீழே இருக்கக்கூடியதுன்னு பார்க்கும்போது நம்ம படிச்சு வரக்கூடிய சமுதாயங்கள் நிறைய பேர் லாயராவோ தாசில்தாராவோ போலீஸ் ஆவோ கலெக்டராவோ வரக்கூடியவங்க அவங்களுக்கு கீழே இருக்கக்கூடிய மனிதர்களுடைய கஷ்டத்தை யார் புரிஞ்சுக்கிறாங்க அவங்களும் போய் கரப்ஷனுக்குள்ள போறாங்க லஞ்சம் வாங்குறாங்க கீழே இருக்கக்கூடிய மனிதர்களுடைய பிரச்சனைகளை புரிஞ்சுக்கிறது இல்லை அப்போ இது தொடர்ந்து நம்ம எவ்வளவு கல்வி பயின்றாலும் இது தொடர்ந்து வந்து நம்ம வந்து ஒரு வன்முறையான ஒரு சூழ்நிலையே தான் திரும்ப திரும்ப நம்ம வந்து செலுத்திக்கிட்டே போறத பார்ப்போம் இப்ப இதுல சமீப காலத்துல வந்து சில மாற்றங்கள் சில நாடுகள்ல நல்ல உதாரணம் உதாரணத்துக்கு குறிப்பா ராஜாஜி சொன்ன மாதிரி நார்வேல வந்து செய்தித்தாள்கள் ஊடகங்கள் வந்து வன்முறையான விஷயங்களை போடக்கூடாது மக்கள் கிட்ட கொண்டு போகக்கூடாது அப்படின்ற மாதிரியான உத்தரவுகள் வந்திருக்கு ஆஹ் ஜெயில்கள்ல வந்து வரக்கூடிய கைதிகளுக்கு வந்து நல்வழிப்படுத்தி அவங்கள வந்து திரும்ப வந்து நல்ல மனிதர்களா அங்கீகரிச்சு நல்ல மனிதர்களா அவங்களை கொண்டு வரணும் ஜெயில்கள் வந்து அவங்கள வந்து துன்புறுத்துறதுக்கான கூடங்கள் இல்ல அவங்கள வந்து திரும்ப வந்து நல்வழிப்படுத்தக்கூடிய கூடங்களா மாத்தணும்னு ஆஹ் ஜெயில இருக்கக்கூடிய பணியாளர்களுக்கு வந்து ட்ரைனிங் கொடுத்து அது மாதிரி ஜெயில்களா வந்து வடிவமைச்சு வடிவமைக்கக்கூடிய சூழ்நிலை பார்க்கும் பூட்டான்ல வந்து பூட்டான்ல வந்து எங்ககிட்ட பெரிய அளவுல ஜிடிபி இல்ல பெரிய அளவுல பொருளாதாரம் இல்ல ஆனா நாங்க வந்து எங்க மக்கள் வந்து சந்தோஷமா இருக்கிறாங்கன்றத அந்த நாடு வெளிப்படுத்துறத நம்ம பார்க்கும் அப்ப இது மாதிரியான நல்ல விஷயங்கள் வந்து தொடர்ந்து நம்ம கிட்ட நடந்து அதே மாதிரி இந்த சுற்றுச்சூழல்ல நடக்கக்கூடிய நடக்கக்கூடிய எந்த வயலன்ஸ்லயும் இங்க இருக்க போலீஸோ ஆர்மியோ நம்ம கிட்ட இருக்கக்கூடிய பெரிய ஆயுதங்களோ எதுவுமே பண்ண முடியாது கங்கை காவேரி கங்கையில இருக்கக்கூடிய பிரச்சனையா இருக்கலாம் அது காவேரியில் இருக்கக்கூடிய பிரச்சனையா இருக்கலாம் அல்லது வனங்கள் அழிகிற பிரச்சனையா இருக்கலாம் இதுல வந்து போலீஸோ நம்ம உருவாக்கி வச்சிருக்கக்கூடிய வன்முறை கட்டமைப்பு எதுவுமே அதுல வந்து சரி பண்ண முடியாது அப்படின்றத நம்ம பார்க்கணும் அப்போ போலீஸோ ஆர்மியோ இன்னைக்கு வந்து இந்த வன்முறை அடக்குறதுக்கான சொல்யூஷன் கிடையாது ஆனா மாறா அஹிம்சையை வந்து ஒவ்வொரு மனிதரும் இந்த அஹிம்சையை பின்பற்றக்கூடிய சூழல் அஹிம்சையை வந்து பரவலாக்கணும் கல்லூரிகள் மூலமாக பள்ளிகள் மூலமா இனி வரக்கூடிய சந்ததிகள்ல சந்ததிகள்கிட்ட அஹிம்சையை பரவலாக்கும் மூலம்தான் இந்த உலகத்துல நடக்கூடிய பெரும்பாலான கான்ஃபிளிக்ட் கருத்து வேறுபாடுகளை வந்து களைஞ்சு ஒரு அமைதியான சூழலை வந்து நாம உருவாக்க முடியும் இத வருங்கால சங்கதிகள் ரொம்ப ஆழமா உணர்ந்து ஒரு ஒரு வன்முறை இல்லாத ஒரு சமுதாயத்தை உருவாக்க வேணும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி ராஜாஜி நம்முடைய உரையை முடிச்சுக்கிட்டாரு ஒரு இது ஒரு மிகச்சிறந்த உரை ஒரு உரையா நம்ம பாக்குறோம் இதுல யாரும் கேள்விகள் இருந்தா நீங்க கேட்கலாம் ராஜாஜி கிட்டியூ யோகேஷ் பாய் தர் இஸ் அூட்டிஃபுல் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் அண்ணா எனக்கு ஒரு கொஸ்டின் கேட்டுக்கிறேன் இன்னொரு விஷயம் இந்த நான் வயலன்ஸ்ன்றத நம்ம ஃபாலோ பண்றோம் நம்ம குழந்தைங்களுக்கு நம்ம கத்து கொடுக்கறோம் ஒரு யார்கிட்ட எப்படி நடந்துக்கணும் பேட் வேர்ட்ஸ் யூஸ் பண்ண கூடாது அது மத்தவங்கள ஹர்ட் பண்ணும் அந்த மாதிரி இந்த மாதிரி நம்ம வளர்த்த சூழ்நிலையிலையும் அந்த குழந்தைங்க வந்து என்னன்னா சொசைட்டியை ஃபேஸ் பண்ணும்போது அவங்க நிறைய பிரச்சனைகளை ஃபேஸ் பண்ணும்போது அவங்க கோபத்தை வெளிப்படுத்தாம அதை சப்ரஸ் பண்ணிக்கிறாங்க அதனால அவங்களுக்கு நிறைய ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் உண்டாகுது அப்ப அந்த குழந்தைங்களை அந்த குழந்தைங்களை நம்ம எப்படி வழி நடத்தணும் அப்படிங்கறதுதான் என்னோட கொஸ்டின் Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, should, should we go one by one or there are one or two yeah. other comments? Yeah, one by one. We'll go, we'll go one by one. one uh, by one. So, uh, I can translate. Yeah. So, he's so, saying, uh, 
Yeah. So you 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 understood. You understood. I understood, okay. but then you you can still translate so that I get the spirit of. Yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So she says, uh, "This is a very good uh, thing." And we teach our children to follow non-violence. We teach our children to be not uh, uh, violent. So our children can follow this. Our children are ready to follow this. They are they are following these things. But at times when uh, they are suppressed by the violent forces, so they our children may fall in stress. So how to handle the situation? Mm, right, right. I think uh, uh, it's an interesting. an interesting problem because uh, uh, what you are what you are saying is uh, correct because uh, there is only one person in the society who believe in non violence and all others believe in violence uh, then the person who believe in non violence need to be very convinced very very convinced like like what happened with gandhi the entire british uh, government believed in violence but then gandhi himself believed in non violence and the faith was so deep that he started developing new methods to handle this uh, handle this problem of violence so when we when we help our children to understand non violence the value of it uh, it should not be just saying that look you be non violent you don't do this etc our children should also understand uh, that every every violent situation is a challenge for me to deepen my own capacity on non violence you know it's like um, you need a classroom to learn no you need a classroom what is the what is which is the classroom for a a non violent person to learn uh, deepen his non violent techniques basically violence whenever you see a violent uh, you see violent behavior you know oh, how to deal with it no uh, i i will i will tomorrow i will try to bring a new method to deal with it uh, in some films you see na the the policeman is coming aggressively and the person is giving him a flower and the policeman feels very helpless you know somebody who is who is giving us flower how can i beat you so you develop techniques uh, so slowly there should be more and more people to back up see today the prevalence is prevalence is of violence and violent behavior so one person two person may find that uh, it is it's not comfortable to deal with this group because it is too big Uh, too aggressive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But then, let our children, one or two, begin to act, come back and discuss with you, and say, "Look, this was the behavior, and I found it difficult to handle." So we discuss it and find a new way. Tomorrow, what should you do when you go and meet the same group of people? So this is a training process. You know, in our, in my work also, uh, I train many young people to go to villages and do non-violent action. and some of them come back successful some of them come back beaten up so then we discuss and say look where did we where did we go wrong why why didn't we use this method rather than that method etc so uh, let us let us hold on to this young people whom you say practice non violence in life practice non violence in terms of what you speak and what you think and what you act etc but don't leave them alone like that so that they get depressed and say look my mother says i should be non violent but the society is very violent discuss it every day and see what went wrong and how can we handle it tomorrow etc and in, there are many interesting cases where uh, uh, the the next boy sitting in the classroom was very violent and how this boy and his mother worked together to turn the other boy non violent and slowly to realize his behavior is bad in many colleges and schools in in america they have a peace corner if two boys or two girls will fight they are sent to the peace corner and say look now you sit down and talk and when you find a solution come back to the will to school if you don't find a solution don't come back till then you sit there uh, we are not going to help you we need to find a solution to your problem so and then many of them learn the process of dialogue and process of solving the problems by by practice you know there is no other way like swimming you practice and and learn uh, cycling you practice and fall and learn similarly non violence is also something people have learned violence the hard way same way non violence should also be learned very hard way it is not going to happen because we already messed up the society as much as we can 
uh, because uh, it is Gandhi's country, it is Buddha's country, it is Mahavir Swami's country. But then we have messed it up completely in the name of caste, in the name of religion, in the name of politics, in the name of uh, capitalism, etc. So we need to help our children to swim, to cycle through these difficult times. So I think that is why it is very good beginning. You know, these are the discussions should happen and young people should feel, oh, that is not something bad to try. Can I try it tomorrow? Uh, and, uh, and if I fail, can I come back and talk to people who, who care for me, uh, who will help me? So developing this technique is also as difficult as many other techniques. Like when you learn chemistry, you make a mistake in the in the in the uh, place where you were you laboratory you make a mistake you come back you correct so same way this is this is something to be learned uh, and we need to help our children to learn it properly do it properly and master it master it yeah thank you rajaji hmm. uh, any other question yes i have a question and i'm yeah. saraswati uh, mm -hmm. That was an excellent session and uh, it is a real eye-opener. Uh, I have a question like, is there a word uh, equivalent to non-violence without using the word violence in English that we can use? Uh, this, is, this is a debate going on, you know. In fact, uh, uh, people write non-violence, non hyphen violence. No, that's not correct. It should be written as one word, non-violence. Non-violence is a word for, and uh, like ahimsa, you know, himsa, ahimsa. Uh, non-violence is a word for a, a, a particular way of behaving, particular way of acting, etc. It need not be seen as violence and non. It can be seen as a word, non-violence. Now, this is what we are trying to help people to say, look, this should not be seen as a negative word, that violence is dominant and non is something attached to it. Non-violence itself is a full word for a particular style of behavior, particular style of acting. Uh, and that, uh, that is not yet very popular. But in all our writings, we make non-violence one word and uh, try to help people to understand it is, it is a word in itself. And that should be used as it is. Uh, and in America, they are doing a lot of work on, on this and trying to help people to uh, differentiate between this, uh, this idea of hyphen, violence, non kind of a thing. Yeah. So uh, that should not bother us a lot because when you say ahimsa also, it looks as if ah and himsa, but it is, it's ahimsa, one, one word. And we need to, in some countries, you know, the problem is also in, in Latin America in their dictionary, there is no word in non-violence. No, uh, at least we have a word. In some countries, they don't even have a word for this particular behavioral pattern. Uh, so they are much, uh, much further down the line because they need to, first of all, invent the word and then start practicing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I don't think that word should be uh, such a such a big concern. Uh, it's a question of how we use it and how we pronounce it and how we uh, make people understand it. Yeah, Saraswati. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank yes, you. thank you so thank much. You. And I have another question. Uh, when I was yes, uh, a school going girl in the seventies and eighties, we used uh -huh. to have uh, moral science classes, and uh -huh. nowadays we don't have classes of such type. We, do you think those uh, the inclusion of those classes will help children to understand the nonviolence and other values bet in a better way? Yes, I think, uh, you see, the, the, the uh, moral classes have its own limitations, Saraswati, because uh, there are, again, lessons. You know, morality needs to be learned by watching, you know, children. Uh, for children, the first heroes are their parents. And then the second heroes are their teachers. And they very, very closely watch you if you're a teacher. And they learn much of what they learn from, from their teachers. Right, and they respect the teacher. They look upon the teacher, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And very often, even if you teach uh, in the moral classes, what need to be done, what need not be done, and if your behavior is not based on morality, he is not interested or she is not interested in what you teach. 
is more interested in what you do. So if the teacher is coming late every day in the classroom, uh, she's not taking much interest in the students, not interacting with the children properly. And, you know, then they know this is, this is, this is the real way of dealing with life. You, know, you, can, <clears throat> you can speak something in the moral class, but what you do is very different. So much of the contradiction in today's world is because the way we behave in front of our, in front of our children and uh, they understood contradiction is just a way, right? You can say dharti ma, uh, mother uh, soil, but you can exploit it completely and destroy it completely. You can say Ganga Ma, you can pollute it completely. You can say Saraswati Ma for education, but you can misuse it completely. You can say Lakshmi Ma uh, for uh, wealth, but you can abuse your Lakshmi Ma completely. So slowly they understand you can call people mother, but you don't have to respect them. You can, you can be disrespectful to your mother. And that contradictory world is being created in front of the children every day. So the less we contradict, that is morality that young people can learn, right? How, how grown up people behave. Uh, we may speak a lot against corruption, do movements after movement after corruption, but then they see how, how wealth is coming in the village, uh, wealth is coming in the house, how new cars are brought, now buildings are bought. They know my parents don't earn so much. So like Gandhi said, uh, having too much is always possible through, through bad means. That is why Gandhi was insisting on means and ends. You know, it is not only ends. What you achieve is not so important. How you achieve is important. So we are not giving enough importance to this question of how. And the moment we start giving importance to this question of how, that is morality. And that morality will click to the children and say, ah, this is not how one should behave. Uh, one should not say so. One should not... Uh, uh, fight, one should discuss. You know, it's not debate, but it is dialogue. So I think we need to set example. And example setting is more important than moral classes. But then why shouldn't they have moral classes also? Right? But then that should be uh, very, very parallel to how we behave. That's all what I'm trying to do, say, Saraswati. But then uh, I'm not discouraging moral classes. But I think moral classes alone will not do. A behavioral pattern is also equally important if you want to succeed in your moral classes. Okay, Saraswati. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Sir? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, I'm going to talk to you. You translate it. Who is talking to you? Yes, yes. I am Indrakshi. From Indrakshi. Lendo. Okay. Indrakshi. Okay, Indrakshi. Go ahead. Um, sir, your class was, sorry, your session was quite interesting, sir. I just loved it. I have yeah. few doubts. Like, uh, sir, in the... Previous ma'am, Saraswati ma'am, get the moral classes when the students apply panna, when they effective are recommend. In the moral classes, illa providing education about non-violence, adu when the totally or urban or illa or another education curricula students come when they yes, it obviously gives hands mari. But what about people or students living in village, rural area, illa na or education curricula the or children ko seri, Adivasi people illa na under group of children ko, avangal ke apni sir in the non-violence ko ondu pomuri, avangal madhi le apni the trust build panna muriyo. Because recent or article la when the uh, like we have seen a Dalit group of people were uh, forced to, to fall on the feet of other group of community. Other path and the influence connection Valara Kudya and the students. How can we build that trust, sir? <laughs> Very good. Uh, uh, Yogesh, you, you want to translate Rajan, or I can need, I can you need, you need, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you need a translation? I, I don't need. I can okay. I can I can follow Indrakshi okay. to great extent. Indrakshi, okay. now look, I mean, uh, uh, okay, to great extent, uh, the Adivasis are living a non-violent way of life. You know, it's like, uh, if you see them, they don't accumulate. They only take what they want from the forest. If you have seen them closely, you'll understand that they are more non-violent with nature. They are uh, non-violent in their own relationship with each other. And uh, this is basically, this very violent behavior comes with uh, what you call the modern education, right? Uh, uh, if you go to a village, how they treat you. Uh, if you go to a city, how they treat you, you know that. You, know, you, you have seen this happening. So 
and we call them backward. You know? So this is the problem now. Uh, we have coined words like backward and uh, uncivilized, illiterate, et cetera, et cetera, for people who behave better, right? So the Adivasis generally tell me, look, you may be poor in terms of money. Uh, uh, we may be poor in terms of money, but then we are very rich in terms of our culture, very rich, rich in terms of our heart, very rich in terms of our relationship with nature. So, but then we call them poor, right? <laughs> so the educated people have created a game, right? That uh, we are, uh, they are poor, they are backward, etc. And that is where we fail to learn from them. The moment we start learning from the, the so-called poor people, so-called Adivasis and uh, marginalized communities, we will understand they are much more nonviolent, much more cultured, uh, much more advanced in many ways. They may not have a car, they may not have uh, a big building, but they have a lot of culture, they have, they have a lot of kindness, they have a lot of community life, they have a lot of relationship with the nature, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, Learning from reality, that is what it's called, you know. What do we learn from? We are all learning from test books. We are all learning from classroom. And we are all forcing people to go to classrooms. We are all forcing people to learn from test books. We are not forcing people to learn from or asking people to learn from reality. The reality is the real book from where you need to learn. Very often in my training program, I bring an ordinary farmer to speak about farming, a carpenter to speak about carpentry, and teach young children to respect them for what they are. How many carpenter came to your classroom? How many farmer came to your classroom? How many cobblers came to your classroom? Even a person who is fixing bicycle is a highly knowledgeable person. Why don't we bring them into our classroom and say, look, this man, old lady, for example, in a, a selling vegetable on the roadside, did we invite her into our classroom to tell us how to sell vegetable? That's economy economics, that with just 500 rupees, how are you keeping your family going? What is greater economy than what economy? So we haven't yet understood the value of people. We are in a different world created by our own game and we continue to keep it. So to answer your question, we need to reorganize a lot of things. You know, we need to organize a lot of things. We have gone a wrong, long way in a wrong direction. And because we have gone a long way in the wrong direction, it is important for us to justify it. And we are all into justifying the wrong route we have taken, the economic route, the social route, the educational route, and we are justifying it day and night. One day, one should wake up and say, I thought COVID will do that. COVID didn't do that. One way should wake up and say, look, this is not, this is not all about life. Life is very different. This is not the way aggressive, violent way is not the human way. Uh, it should be more based on kindness and non-violence, et cetera, et cetera. So this is something which the whole school need to sit down and think for a week. Are we taking our children in the right direction? Uh, is there a different direction where our children can go so that the country can be a better place, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it is a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big task in the, in, in the actually... It is not one, one, one hour discussion. It's a long, long work if we really want to correct the, the, the system that we have built in the last many years. Yeah. You you get my point, Indrakshi, to some extent? Yes, sir. Thank you so Konjo, much. Konjo, 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 Good evening, sir. I'm Shainavi and I'm Malavi. What is what is your name? We are studying ninth standard. And what is your you for what this is, great session. Sri Shainavi. Shainavi. Sri Shainavi. Hmm? Yes, Shainavi and I'm Malavi. Sri Shainavi and Malavi. Malavi. Okay. Shainavi and Malavi. Okay. Okay, Hi. Malavi. Shainavi. Uh, Okay, tell me uh, what is what is we that? We have here? some questions, sir. Okay, please. <laughs> what incident impressed you to came into follow this non-violence? And huh. what age you came into non-violence? Huh. Okay, wonderful. And then, so, um, 
as a student what can i do for society in non violence sir uh -huh. okay so okay the first question is why did you come to non violence na what incident you uh, you press ah uh, okay so that is one second one is how can how can i at, as a student eh? at what age you came uh, to follow non violence sir age okay 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 good good and then uh, okay good so uh, once sir uh, shaidavi and malvi this is this is uh, it happens in different age you know it's like in my case uh, malvi i was uh, i was a student of a a gandhian school you know so we have to spin our own clothes right we have to do work in the agriculture field uh so we have to produce our own food because we believe we are told as a child uh, we are told that look um, uh, if you don't work and you eat it is silly that how can how can you how can you eat if you don't produce any so we all go in front sit in front of the plate and eat without even thanking people who produce the food when you when you eat your food when you have a meal do you fold hand and thank the people who produce that food how many people work behind it vegetable comes from one place yogesh you guys you guys can you hear me now Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, good. Yeah. good, 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 good. Yeah. So I think my system. So I was, I was, uh, I was telling um, Shadavi and Malavi that look, when we sit in front of the food, how many of us really say thank you to the producer? That's not my life, isn't it? I mean, so I was taught early on that look, when you you produce your own food if you can. When you sit down and eat, you think about those who produced, who worked very hard. to make you eat this good food right and so that is how you begin normal habits you make your own cloth and you understand the difficulty in making cloth and you respect people who make cloth non violence is all about kindness i told you. so i had this education early on so i was very happy that i could i could thank people yeah there's a board Yeah, please, please, please. Hmm. 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 Hmm
I started moving into different places. I went to Nagaland, you know, I go to for this violence. I go to Colombia sometime. I go to Brazil sometime, to different parts of the world. Why I say this? If you if you slowly learn how to how to do non-violent thing, there are more people wanting to learn about it. So because uh, it's not something which many people have learned. Uh, violence, many people learn. What you know, you know how to hit people, how to scold people, but how do you become non-violent? Uh, how do you respect non-violence as a very interesting and science? So that is how I learned. So slowly, slowly I learned. I um, we can take it to villages also. We can train young people. Uh, we can make people feel why non-violent relationship is important. In the family in the society. Uh, why uh, we need to to others, etc., etc. You know, a person called uh, Vinoba Bhave, he walked in India for 14 years, just walked, 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 14 years, and said, okay, I want to ask for land from people and take land and give it to landless people. And what he got? 14 years of walking, he got 4.2 million acres of land. 42 lakhs acres of land. One person got because he was walking and asking. He didn't use force. He used gun. But he just asked please kindly help the poor people who don't have land etc. So I think non-violence can be practiced in many ways, many styles. So we should all try to develop our own way of uh, non-violent action. And by seeing as many people will learn, by teaching many people will learn, but we t- responsibility to make it the way of life. Yeah, non-violence is not just a theory. Application of non-violence, you know, how do you apply non-violence so that it becomes a culture, a culture of non-violence it is called, you know, not just a subject in the classroom. A culture of non-violence will mean everybody will more behave in a non-violent way, so the society becomes non-violent. Is that enough, uh, Malvi? Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Sir. Yeah. Thank you. We will continue this discussion. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. I think yeah. your Yogesh will organize more course uh, discussion like this. So we will we will come to each uh, to meet each other again and again. Yeah. yeah? Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We, yeah. we'll have thank a you. very good meeting with children at Sesi after this COVID. I mean, we should do. Else. We should do. Bring all of them. Bring all of yes. them here, and I will be very happy to spend a day with all of them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Rajus, thank you, sir. Thank you, And we have, we have uh, three to four minutes. Uh, Rajus, we'll sir, I have a question to you, yeah. sir. Yeah. Who is this? So, what are the other countries which fought for the freedom? Like India in non-violence, sir? Uh, well, uh, immediately after India became free, many countries in Africa became free non-violently. You know, they didn't take any arms to fight against uh, fight against uh, the British people. Uh, one of the British colonies suddenly disintegrated and they became, became indeed uh, a dozen countries in Africa. Right? So, uh, this was this inspiration came from India, and then you see uh, when Martin Luther came to India, what did he say? He said, "Look, I go to every country as a tour, but when I come to India, I come as a pilgrim with great respect because India is very different." And Nelson Mandela, after twenty-seven years of uh, imprisonment, when he came, what did he say? Look, I want to want to have reconciliation. Reconciliation is that I don't want to hate white people who treated me so badly, but I want to have reconciliation and live together. So I think there are many examples how India influenced many countries for nonviolent uh, how Gandhi influenced hundreds of people. Wherever I go, I, there is when I go to Canada, they speak about the Canadian Gandhi. When you go to Palestine, they say Palestine. When you go to France, they speak about the uh, uh, French Gandhi. What does it mean? Any person who is doing great work, good work, now equated with Mahatma Gandhi, you know, there may be a lot of people criticizing and Gandhi and saying that uh, because of Gandhi, the country is so bad, etc., etc. 
but that is that is not so important i mean that that we need to uh, discuss uh, at a later stage because why why they do what they do but thousands of people all over the world get inspiration from gandhi and they want to follow, uh, the the direction suggested by gandhi so we have our struggle as an example we have gandhi as an example so i think if we want india can become a a place for uh, training people in non violence you know we bring a lot of young people from different parts of the world to india to train them in non violence uh, and we are also now speaking about non violent tourism all the tourists coming why should they only go to taj mahal and uh, and see buildings they should also go to small places like gandhi's ashram places where people are struggling with non violent methods and understand in not all about buildings and roads and airports india is all about non violence and we have this responsibility to give this lesson that we learned hard way many years of suffering we have learned this of non violence is a powerful tool so we need to give it to the world that will be our gift to the world nuclear bomb is not our gift that's americans then big <coughs> aircrafts our gift science there are many other countries which are much, much more advanced than us non violence no other country as advanced as like us like ashoka and buddha and gandhi and vinoba you know is a country of no it's mahavir so let us let us be proud about what we have and this that we want to give it to the world so that the world will be better yeah yeah yes, sir thank you sir thank you thank you thank, thank, you. thank, you. thank, you. thank you thank you thank you wonderful thank you raja ji for a wonderful speech you have spared a very good time with us uh, we appreciate your sharing your experiences and it is very very uh, much inspirational and i'm happy it has brought uh, many students to open up their views so normally we don't get uh, the views of students or we don't get feedback from uh, uh, children uh, without uh, any impact so it is very beautiful to see children coming out with their uh, views on non violence asking their questions to you so it was a very wonderful session hope everyone has uh, got many good values from this session and we'll continue speaking non violence we'll continue speaking uh, peace among children and the rest of the society thank you raja ji for your wonderful session and all the full time that has been spared to us sir thank you thank you yes yeah yeah thank you very much ஒரு <laughs> sorry uh, how can we handle this violence, uh, violence in uh, the non violence way so there are if, if even if, if we uh, go in the non violence way uh, they will uh, they will um, they will beat us uh, uh, with, with their violence how can we handle yeah, yeah. this violence sir? yeah yeah so as it is day christina you are right you know there is a mismatch there is a mismatch in terms of uh, the size of violence and size of non violence this is our mistake it's our mistake that we didn't give you mean if you if you plant a tree you need to put water uh, to grow mahatma gandhi planted this tree called non violence and we didn't put water so it didn't grow and others put water to their plant called violence so we made a mistake of not understanding non violence we just said oh mahatma gandhi fought non violently we got freedom that is part of our school curriculum that's all we didn't see the value of that and people who promote violence they saw the value of that they said we can oppress people we can take their land we can take their property we can make all the money by doing violence and we didn't work in our field so people who don't work i mean if you don't run every day you don't you don't run the other guy will run so i think um, today you are right there is a mismatch there is there is a there is a feeling that we may not be able to match this guys but i have seen that uh, many people are now convinced that non violence need to be a a powerful tool we need to become a powerful tool otherwise there will be no planet 
you know if we allow this uh, violent group to to move the way they are moving uh, there will be no planet and if there is no planet what 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 is, what is going to happen our next generation so i think uh, even today let us wake up maybe today we will feel we don't match the groups that is so strong in violence but if we all come together and start working deepening our understanding about non violence uh, develop this art and science of non violence let our children start believing it and then it will it will become a powerful tool and so there's a lot of work need to be done and uh, let us let us commit uh, that is why i am happy to devote time for this kind of session because i think there's a lot of work need to be done if you really want to reach where we want to reach and many people from all over the world are coming to india to learn about non violence and very often i feel sad that look in our own country our schools and colleges have invited me once in a belgium university i am working to make all their curriculum related to non violence and i was asking universities after universities in india to invite me for one discussion they don't invite so why if you neglect a child that doesn't grow so i think we need to take care of this child called non violence and make it grow so that it becomes a very powerful tool and that is that is important because the world is wanting to learn from india all our universities colleges should really cope with that subject now yeah christina for today that is good enough yes sir uh, thank you for your clear answer sir yeah, yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you sir स्पोर्ट्स डे और एनी अदर सेलिब्रेशन the the person a person will catch a dow and while the function is going on we release it and say non violence what's the use in it sir yeah that is that is that is one action yeah leaving leaving a dow in the sky maybe one action for peace that is commonly understood that okay if you you hold a dow and then leave it in the air you are almost committing to say the whole world need to be free like the dow is now flying out you know that's only a kind of a kind of a symbolic thing uh but there are other occasions when we can we can see when in the when the classrooms for example you know one uh we all celebrate when one becomes uh, uh first uh sometimes we should also learn to celebrate uh, the one who is becoming last so uh, why only first need to be celebrated why shouldn't the last be celebrated you know it's like um, uh, all this there is a lot of lot of problems with how we organize our sports how we organize our classrooms how we treat our students how what kind of values we give uh, by the way we behave etc etc i think you are absolutely right when you are raising this question will only symbolism work or shouldn't be more we be more serious Uh, i would say let there be symbolism uh, some some uh, thing like kissing a dow but let us be more serious then just doing that once in a while you know uh, because that is not going to help uh, there is only the liberation of that one word but there are millions of people who are not liberated they are under poverty they are suffering injustice so when we release a dow this is what we should understand that nobody need to be oppressed everybody should have a free sky to travel and fly and do millions of our people have that sky to fly if that is not there then the dow should tell us that look time has come that we work with the poor people who are oppressed for so many years landless migrant laborers and commit that i will use my education the moment i complete my so called education i will really devote my life for those people who now have an opportunity to go to a school or college i will work with them i will strengthen them etc etc then the dow is important i mean that that simple will help you otherwise it is just symbolic and it has no value you are right yeah yes sir rajas, thank you rajas rajas yeah thank you thank you 
thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you very much oh, okay. yogesh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it's yeah. almost yeah. seven <laughs> yeah okay ah yes. yeah we have come to boss discussion so uh, yeah. thank you very yeah. much raja ji for spending a very great time with us and we'll we'll do more on non violence and peace and we'll have more interactions let uh, let us guess uh, for a speedy recovery of this covid uh, situation and let the uh, nation the let the planet uh, get its uh, process again soon and we'll see a better world soon thank you raja ji uh, thank you everyone for your participation uh, we'll again meet together in another uh, session thank you all thank you ji thank you very much i also want to thank every one of you for this beautiful yeah, discussion yeah thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir